My name is Sean Rose, I'm District 1 City Councilor. Today I'm going to read a piece from Liars Don't Qualify by Junius Edwards. In 1870, uh, the 15th Amendment was ratified and allowed people the right to vote regardless of race and color. Uh, and in 1961, the story was written before the Civil Rights Voting Act uh, that occurred in 1964 and 1965. This piece really touches me because uh, as a young kid, I didn't recognize the value of voting. I didn't recognize the value of voting until uh, I was an adult uh, and the importance of it. So anytime I get the opportunity to learn more about the history of voting or what our veterans fought for um, to have us uh, be given the right to vote uh, is a great opportunity uh, for me. Liars Don't Qualify, again, uh, by Julius, Junius Edwards, excuse me. Will Harris sat on the bench in the waiting room for another hour. His pride was not the only thing that hurt. He wanted them to call him and get him registered so he could get out of there. Twice he started to go into the inner office and tell them, but he thought better of it. He had counted 96 cigarette butts on the floor when a fat man came out to, of the office and spoke to him. What you want, boy? Will Harris got to his feet. I came to register. Oh, did you? Yes, sir. The fat man stared at Will for a second, then turned his back to him. As he turned his back, he said, come on in here. Will went in. It was a little office and dirty, but not so dirty as the waiting room. There were no cigarette butts on the floor here. Instead, there was paper. They looked like candy wrappers to Will. There were two desks jammed in there, and a bony little man sat at one of them, his head down, his fingers fumbling with some papers. The fat man went around the empty desk and pulled up a chair. The bony man did not look up. Will stood in front of the empty desk and watched the fat man sit behind it. The fat man swung his chair around until he faced the little man. Charlie, he said. Yes, yeah, Sam, Charlie said, not looking up from his work. Charlie, this boy here came to register. Y you sure? Y you sure that's what he said, Sam, still not looking up? You sure? You better ask him again, Sam. All right, Charlie, all right, I'll ask him, the fat man said. He looked up at Will and said, boy, what you come here for? I came to register. The fat man stared up at him. He didn't say anything. He just stared, his lips thin, his eyes wide open. His left hand searched behind him and came up with a handkerchief. He raised his left arm and mopped his face with his handkerchief, his eyes still on Will. The odor from under his sweat-soaked arm made Will step back a little. Will held his breath until the fat man finished mopping his face. The fat man put his handkerchief away. He pulled open a desk drawer. Then he took his eyes off Will. He reached into the desk drawer and took out a bar of candy. He took the wrapper off the candy, threw the wrapper on the floor at Will's feet. He looked at Will and ate the candy. Will stood there and tried to keep his face straight. He kept telling himself, I'll take anything, I'll take anything to get this done. The fat man kept his eyes on Will and finished the candy. He took out his handkerchief and wiped his mouth. He grinned, then put his handkerchief away again. Charlie, the fat man turned to the little man. Yes, yeah, Sam? He says he's come to register. Sam, are you sure? Pretty sure, Charlie. Well, explain to him what it's about. The bony man still had not looked up. All right, Charlie, Sam said and looked up at Will. Boy, when folks come here, they intend to vote, so they register first. And that's what I want to do, Will said. What's that? Say that again. That's what I want to do, register and vote. The fat man turned his head to the bony man. Charlie, yes, yeah, Sam. He says, Charlie, this boy says he wants to register and vote. The bony man looked up from his desk the first time, and he looked at Sam. Then both of them looked at Will. Will looked from one of them to the other, to the other. It was hot. He wanted to sit down. Anything. I'll take anything. The man called Charlie, turned back to his work, and Sam swung his chair around until he faced Will. You got a job, he said. Yes, sir. Boy, you know what you're doing? Yes, sir. All right, Sam said, all right. Just then, Will heard the door open behind him and someone came in. It was a man. How are you all? How about registering? Sam smiled. Charlie looked up and smiled. Took care of you right away, Sam said. And then to Will, boy, you go wait outside. As Will went out, he heard Sam's voice. Take a seat, please. Take a seat. Have you fixed up here in a little bit? What's your name? 
Thanks, the man said, and Will heard the scrape of a chair. Will closed the door and went back to his bench. Anything, 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 I'll take it all, he said to himself. Pretty soon, the man came out smiling, Sam out behind him, and he called Will and told him to come back in. Will went in and stood before the desk. Sam told him he wanted to see his papers. Discharge, high school diploma, birth certificate, social security card, and some other papers. And Will had them all. He felt good when he handed them to Sam. You belong to any organization? No, sir. Pretty sure about that? Yes, sir. You ever heard of the 15th Amendment? Yes, sir. What does that one say? Will said, it's the one that says all citizens can vote. Oh, you like that boy, don't you? Yes, sir, I like them all. Sam's eyes got big. He slammed his right fist down on the desktop. I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you liked the 15th Amendment. Now answer my questions. I like it, Will put in, and Sam watched Will catch his breath. Sam sat there looking up at Will, and he opened and closed his desk, pounding his fist, his mouth hung open. Charlie. Yeah, Sam? Not looking up. You hear that? Looking wide-eyed at Will. You hear that? I heard it, Sam. Will had to work to keep his face straight. Boy, Sam said, you born in this town? You got my birth certificate right there in front of you, sir. You happy here? Yes, sir. You got nothing against the way that go around here, right? No, sir. Can you read? Yes, sir. Are you smart? No, sir. Where did you get that suit? New York? New York? Yeah, New York, said Will. Sam asked and looked over to Charlie and said, as Charlie's head was still down, look back at Will. New York? Yes, sir, said Will. Boy, what you doing, doing there? I got out of the army there. I was discharged there. You believe in what them folks do in New York? I don't know what you mean. Oh, you know what I mean, boy. And you know good and well what I mean. You know how folks carry on in New York. You believe in that? No, sir, said Will slowly. You pretty sure about that? Yes, sir. What year did they make the 15th Amendment? 1870, said Will. Name a signer of the Declaration of the Independent who came president. John Adams. Boy, what did you say? Sam's eyes wide open again. Will thought for a second, then he said, John Adams. Sam's eyes got wider. He looked at Charlie and spoke with a bowed head. Now too much is too much. Then he turned back to Will. He didn't say anything to Will. He narrowed his eyes first and spoke. Did you just say John Adams? Mr. John Adams, Will said, realizing his mistake. That's more like it, Sam smiled. Now why do you want to vote? I want to vote because it's my duty as an American citizen to vote. Ha, Sam said real loud, ha, again, and pushed back from his desk and turned to the bony man. Charlie, yes, yeah, Sam, hear that? I heard it, Sam. Sam leaned back in his chair, keeping his eyes on Charlie. He locked his hands across round his stomach and sat there. Charlie, yes, yeah, Sam, think you and Elnor be coming over tonight? Don't know, Sam, said the bony man, not looking up. You know Elnora. Well, you welcome if you can. I don't know, said Sam. You ought to if you can, drop in. The bony man looked up. Now that's different, Sam. Thought it would be. Can't turn down corn if it's good. You know my corn. I sure do. And I'll drag Elnora. Thanks for having us. The bony man went back to work. Sam turned his chair around to his desk. He opened a desk drawer, took out a package of cigarettes, tore it open, put a cigarette in his mouth, looked up at Will, and he lit the cigarette, took a long drag, and then blew the smoke very slowly right at Will's face. The smoke floated up towards Will's face. It came up in front of his eyes and nose and hung there. Then it danced and played around his face and eventually disappeared. Will didn't move, but he was glad he didn't and he was glad he hadn't been asked to sit down. You have a car? No, sir. Don't you have a job? Yes, sir. You like that job? Yes, sir. You like it, but you want it? Or you don't want it? What do you mean, Will asked. Don't get smart with me, boy, Sam said wide-eyed. I'm asking the question, sir. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right, all right, be sure you do. I understand it, sir. Are you a communist? No, sir. What party do you want to vote for? I wouldn't go by parties. I read about the men and vote for a man, not a party. I vote for the man and not a party. 
Ha, Sam said, looked over at Charlie's bowed head. Ha, huh. he said again and turned back to Will. Boy, you pretty sure you can read? Yes, sir. All right, we'll see about that. Sam took out a book on his desk and flipped some pages, and he gave the book to Will. Read that aloud, he said. Yes, sir, Will said and began. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with one another, and to assume among the powers of earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Will cleared his throat and read on, and he tried to be distinct with each syllable. He didn't need the book. He could have recited the whole thing without the book. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they— Wait a minute, boy, Sam said. Wait a minute. You believe that? You believe that about created equal? Yes, sir, Will said, knowing that was the wrong answer. You really believe that? Yes, sir. Will couldn't make himself say the answer Sam wanted to hear. Sam stuck out his right hand. Will put the book in it. Then Sam turned to the other man. Charlie? Yes, Sam. Charlie, did you hear that? What was it, Sam? This boy here, Charlie. He says he really believes it. Believes what, Sam? What are you talking about? This boy here believes that all men are equal, like it says in the Declaration. Now, Sam, now you know that's not right. You know good and well that's not right. You heard him wrong. Ask him again, Sam. Ask him again, will you? I didn't hear him wrong, Charlie, said Sam, and he turned to Will. Did I, boy? Did I hear you wrong? No, sir. I didn't hear you wrong. No, sir. Sam turned to Charlie. Charlie? Yes, yeah, Sam? You think this boy trying to be smart? Sam, I think he might be. He just might be. He looks like one of them who don't know his place. Sam narrowed his eyes. Boy, he said, you know your place? I don't know what you mean, said Will. Boy, you know good and well what I mean. What do you mean? Boy, who's Sam Lee forward on his desk? Who's asking questions here? You are, sir, said Will. Charlie, you think he's really trying to be smart? Sam, I, I think you better ask him. Boy? Yes, sir. Boy, you trying to be smart with me? No, sir. Sam? Yeah, Charlie? Sam, ask him if he thinks he's as good as you and me. Now, Charlie, now you heard what he said about the Declaration. Ask anyway, Sam. All right, Sam said. Boy, you think you're good as me and Mr. Charlie? No, sir, Will said. They smiled, and Charlie turned away. Will wanted to take off his jacket. It was hot. He felt sweat rolling down his right side. He pressed his right arm up against his side to wipe out his sweat. He thought he had had it, but it rolled again, and he felt another drop come behind that one, and another, and another. He pressed his arm in again. It was no use. He just gave up. How many stars on that flag over here? Thirteen, Will said. What's the name of the mayor in this town? Mr. Roger Philip Thorndike Jones. Spell Thorndike. Capital T-H-O-R-N-E-D-Y-K-E, -E, Thorndike. How long has he been the mayor? Seventeen years, Will said. Who was the biggest hero in the war between the states? General Robert E. Lee. What does E stand for, Edward? You think you're pretty smart, don't you? No, sir. Well, boy, you've been giving me answers too slow. Now I want them fast. Understand? Fast. Yes, sir. What's your favorite song? Dixie, Will said, and prayed Sam wouldn't ask him to sing it. Do you like your job? Yes, sir. What year did Arizona come into the states? 1912. There was another state in 1912, New Mexico. It came in January and Arizona in February. Oh, you think you smart, boy, don't you? No, sir. Oh, yes, you do, boy. Will said nothing. Boy, you make good money on your job? I make enough. Oh, oh, you're not satisfied with it. Oh, no, yes, sir, I am. You don't act like it, boy. You know you don't act like it? What do you mean? You getting smart again, boy? Just who's asking questions here? You are, sir. That's right, that's right. The bony man made a noise with his lips and slammed his pencil down on his desk and he looked at Will and then at Sam. 
Sam, he said. Sam, you having trouble with that boy. Don't you let that boy give you no trouble now, Sam. Don't you do it. Charlie, Sam said. Now, Charlie, you know better than that. You know better. This boy here knows better than that, too. You sure about that, Sam? Are you sure? I better be sure if this boy here knows what's good for him. Does he know, Sam? Do you know, boy? Yes, sir, said Will. Charlie turned back to his work. Boy, Sam said, you sure not a member of any organization? You up to something? No, sir, said Will. Are you sure? I'm sure, said Will. Sam gathered up all Will's papers and he stacked them neatly and placed them in the center of his desk. He took the cigarette out of his, lips, out of his mouth and put it out in the ashtray. He picked up Will's papers and gave them to him. You've been in the army, that right? Yes, sir. You served two years, that right? Yes, sir. You have to do six in the reserve, that right? Yes, sir. You're in the reserve now, that right? Yes, sir. You lied to me here today, that right? No, sir. Boy, I said you lied to me here, that right? No, sir. Oh, yes, you did, boy. Oh, yes, you did. You told me you wasn't in any organization, that right? Yes, sir. Then you lied, boy. You lied to me because you're in the Army Reserve, that right? Yes, sir, I'm, I'm in the Reserve, but I don't think you meant that. I'm, I'm just in it, and don't you have to go to meetings and stuff like that? I, I, I thought you meant some civilian organization. When you said you wasn't in an organization, that was a lie, now wasn't it, boy? He had Will there. When Sam had asked him about organizations, the first thing that popped in Will's mind had been communists or something like them. Now, wasn't it a lie? No, sir, said Will. Sam narrowed his eyes, and Will went on. No, sir, it wasn't a lie. There's nothing wrong with the Army Reserve. Everybody has to be in it. I'm not in it because I want to be in it. I know there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then Sam said, uh, point is, you lied to me here today. I didn't lie. I just didn't understand your question, Will said. You understand the question, boy. You understood good and well, and you lied to me. Now, wasn't it a lie? No, sir. Boy, you going to stand right here in front of me as big as anything and tell me it wasn't a lie? Sam is now shouting at him. Now, wasn't it a lie? Yes, sir, Will said and put his papers in his jacket pocket. You right it was, said Sam. Sam pushed back from his desk. That's it, boy. You can't register. You don't qualify because liars don't qualify. Will sat for a second and said, but, and then... Charlie said, that's it. Charlie then said to Sam, you want to go out and get, uh, you want to get go out and, and eat first today? Will opened the door and went out. As he walked down the stairs, he took off his jacket and tie, opened up his collar, rolled up his shirt sleeves. He stood on the courthouse steps and took a deep breath and heard a noise come from his throat as he breathed out and looked at the flag in the courtyard. The flag hung from its staff, still and quiet, the way he hated to see it, but it was there, waiting, and he hoped that a little push from the right beat breeze would lift it and send it flying and waving and whipping from its staff, proud in the way he loved to see it. He took a cigarette out, lit it, took a deep drag, he blew the smoke out, saw the cigarette burning in his right hand, turned it between his thumb and his forefinger, made a face, and then let the cigarette drop on the court steps. Threw his jacket over his left shoulder and walked down to the bus stop, swinging his arms. Again, the title of the story is Liars Don't Qualify by Junius Edwards. Thank you.